And hello, I'm Brad Edwards. Thank you for joining us here in CBSN Chicago. The stream. On Tuesday, the prosecution rested their case against disgraced R&B star R. Kelly after presenting two weeks of evidence to prove the singer enticed underage girls for sex and even produced child pornography. Court proceedings resume Thursday when the defense's first witnesses take the stand. Here to talk about where the case stands, what we can expect from here, is a defense attorney, one of our friends of the stream, Steve Greenberg. Steve, uh, it is a note here, you also have and currently are still representing R. Kelly uh, involving the, the state case here that is still pending, uh, have repped him since 2018. You're keeping a, a close eye on this one. Uh, the first two weeks, of course, uh, the U.S. attorney and uh, the federal government laid out a pretty, pretty damning case. What are, are your thoughts on it so far? Well, I don't think the case has gone as uh, well as the federal government assumed it would go. You know, there's a couple of different components to this case. There's the uh, manufacturer production of child pornography, which involves three videotapes. There's a fourth videotape, but it doesn't exists. They haven't been able to produce it. They haven't been able to find it. Um, on those, they actually have the videotape to produce. Young lady on the videotape came to court and said, that's me on the videotape. So those charges against uh, R. Kelly are, are troubling and, and probably, he, he probably won't be able to overcome those. But then there's the other aspects. There's the obstruction of justice um, counts. Some of them deal with preventing witnesses from cooperating in the earlier state court prosecution. And with those, I think the government's witnesses were not so good. Uh, they didn't come forward and say, hey, they paid me to not do this. Uh, in fact, they said that, well, we were friends. He was my godfather. He took care of me because he loved me. And then there's some other counts involving some other minors. And again, the witnesses on those counts, I don't think were very convincing uh, based on the tweets that I read in the, in the newspaper articles. Um, sort of what the government found out here is that the people that were involved in this case were not their normal white collar witnesses. And when anytime I think the feds get involved in what's more akin to street co crime or 26 in California stuff, uh, sometimes the witnesses get beat up a bit more than they thought they were. Defense is now going to come in, and uh, he's got some dog defense attorneys in the federal case, R. Kelly does. How do you overcome what, by all accounts, is the, the damning video evidence that some say clearly shows an R. Kelly having sex with clearly underage girls. How, how do you even begin to overcome that in defense of him? I, I don't know, quite frankly, that they can, and I don't know that they're really going to uh, try to do that. Um, I think that it has always been somewhat uh, conceded that the jury was going to see this video. and. And I don't know that anyone's taking the position that it's not R. Kelly. In the state prosecution, in the 2008 trial, uh, the quality of the video that was used was not as good as the quality of the video that they're using in this case. Back then, it was much harder to tell that it was R. Kelly. And the uh, young lady in the video did not come forward and say, that's me in the video. In fact, she had given statements saying it wasn't her in the video. Now she says she lied back then. It is her in the video. Her mother also came to court and said it's her in the video. So, I, you know, sometimes uh, you can't get anywhere with, with a certain count on a case. And that might be the case, case here. And the, the question is just what can you do to mitigate the overall damage in the bigger picture? So that, what it may be looking at now, of course, uh, Mr. Kelly, your uh, client in the state case is facing decades in prison already for a conviction in New York. Um, kind of play this out, get into the weeds for me here. He faces similar charges, except 
except on, on you know, basically that, that he, he bribed the witness in a former trial, you know, he, he subverted justice. And, but it, it's basically similar. The worst crimes are similar to what he's already been convicted of in federal court in New York. Uh, if he were to be found guilty, wouldn't these be served uh, Concurrently, wouldn't they be served at, at, at the same time? You know what? What? What's the that's government's up to the game judge, here? Brad. That's that's completely up to the judge. In any federal case, the judge has the discretion to make things concurrent or consecutive. Look, on the New York case, he got 30 years. He's going to be 81 or 82 years old when he gets out of jail. If he has to serve all of that time, maybe he'll be in his late 70s. Uh, I doubt if the 85-year-old judge in this case would pile on to that. Uh, here's a man who has lost everything professionally and everything personally. Uh, as far as the charges, I think the charges here are, are frankly different than the charges there. The charges there were the actual sex acts themselves that were charged. The sex acts are charged here. What's charged here is the filming of the sex acts. And it, it's maybe a semantical difference, but it is a difference. Okay, duly noted on those differences. Um, and uh, another question for you. Uh, you will defend R. Kelly, uh, are continuing to serve as his defense attorney in the state cases. There is a state case here that is ongoing, uh, and there could potentially be a state case that is brought in uh, Minnesota. Um, depending a lot on what likely happens in this federal case. Um, I mean, a question for you is, uh, have you had any contact with Mr. Kelly? Uh, does R. Kelly ever believe he will one day be free, exonerated, or not be in a courtroom facing some type of charge or allegation? You know, um He's got very good lawyers. You said they're dogged lawyers. We like to think that we're dogged lawyers and we fight hard for our clients. Uh, Mike Leonard and I, who were on the New York case until some people got in, in Robert's ear, uh, we were absolutely convinced we were going to win that case, in which case he would not be facing 30 years now. Uh, absolutely convinced that, that we would prevail on the state court cases. I've looked at the evidence. I understand what's involved. I understand the allegations. Um, and as far as the appeal of the New York case, it, it's very interesting because what they did was they took a bunch of small acts that, that weren't really, you know, they were illegal, but they weren't the crime of the century. Uh, usually when you've got a racketeering case, you've got a gang or the mob, and they said the gang has committed seven murders and three kidnappings, and they've been selling kilos of drugs and so on and so forth. With Kelly's case, what they said was, he didn't disclose to someone he had herpes. That's a misdemeanor. He um, got a fake ID for someone. That's a misdemeanor. They took all these relatively minor things and blew them up into a RICO case. And then the government only asked for 20 years and the judge gave him 30. Uh, there are a whole host of, and I won't bore everyone with the nitty gritty, but of good appellate issues on the New York case. And I frankly believe that if the Second Circuit Court of Appeals has any courage, they will do the right thing and they will overturn that verdict and say that this is a gross abuse of the racketeering laws. It's not what was intended. What, they, what they're doing in a lot of these cases, Brad, if I can pontificate for a minute, is they're, they're going back in time and they're trying to apply 2022 or 2020 outlooks and values to things that happened long ago. It, it happened, in, and I know I'll take a lot of heat for this, but it happened to Weinstein, it happened to Bill Cosby, it's happening to R. Kelly. And, and I think it's unfair. I think that, that looking at things with hindsight, you know, there was a time when women weren't allowed to vote. There was a time when uh, uh, African Americans weren't allowed to mingle with white people. We now know that all of that was wrong, but we're not going back and criminally charging people for those kinds of acts. And I understand it's, it's different, but you're, you're going back and you're applying today's 
values and the way we look at things today to things that happened decades ago when, when not only Kelly looked at it differently, but the alleged victims looked at it differently, their parents looked at it differently, everyone's friends looked at it differently. And, and that's really, you know, this is, this is the greatest hindsight prosecution that I've ever seen. It is noted that uh, many do think there are some uh, uh, appealable issues in the New York case, but y you know, you, and I appreciate what, appreciate what you're saying, but it, it's really, uh, you know, unarguable that R. Kelly is seen having sex with a minor that, that he taped. Right. Uh, it doesn't matter how old the video is. I mean. No, no, no. That, that, and, and I'm, I'm distinguishing that mm -hmm. from the rest of the case. But the other stuff, the obstruction, they've known about that stuff for years. There's a very good statute of limitations argument that the defendants have raised that the obstruction was complete when the 2008 trial uh, came back with its verdict. And that now to prosecute him for the obstruction violates the statute of limitations. Look, I'm never gonna say having sex with a 14 year old is okay. And I think that had they just sought to prosecute him for that, maybe there wouldn't have been a need for a trial. But they're really piling on with this guy, all because of this documentary. And, and what happened in this case was some of the witnesses in this case, in the New York case, came right out and said, we lied in the documentary. Things weren't what we said in the documentary. It, 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 it's really a, an unfair prosecution on many levels. Has he done things wrong? Yes. Did he violate the law? Yes. Should he never have had sex with the 14 year old? Yes. Should he never have filmed it? Yes. Should he be prosecuted for that? Yes. And frankly, he would have been much better off in hindsight and he lost the 2008 trial. That's an interesting point. And, you know, R. Kelly, his supporters and uh, his defenders, you being his defense attorney, will will say this is definitely a case of piling on federal charges, RICO charges, like you said, in New York. Now, the, the different charges here, federal charges here, then potentially state charges here, then potentially state charges in Minneapolis, why, why do you think that and, is? And, and Brad, New York had nothing to do with any of this. If you look at the New York charges, there was one time he had sex with someone in New York uh, who was an adult, but he didn't disclose that he had herpes. That was the connection to New York. Everything else in that case took place in Illinois, California, Florida, New Jersey. I, it had nothing to do with that. Yeah. Once again, Steve Greenberg, R. Kelly's defense attorney in the state case. The key question here, with all the charges that he's facing, really anyone who's been in the courtroom says it comes down to the videotapes. And videotapes clearly show an older R. Kelly having sex with clearly underage girls. Is there any way the defense is going to be able to lay out a case that overcomes that video evidence? Uh, the only way that, that he's getting out of those charges, and he, he was in his 20s at, at the time, uh, is uh, if the jurors are, are the world's biggest R. Kelly fans and they just want to cut him a break. I mean, in all honesty, I don't, I don't know there's a way around those charges, given the video which I've watched and the testimony that they now have. Um, but the rest of it, he's got a fighting chance, and his co-defendants have a, have a fighting chance. Yeah. So you will then, when do you come back into the fold? Will you come back into the fold automatically, or I know the state case is ongoing now, but do you right. expect a decision will be made to go forward or not with the state case, depending on what happens in this, the second federal trial? We were in court this morning on the state case, and the judge raised that very question. I think the answer to that question is uh, up to Kim Fox and what she wants to do after she sees what happens in the uh, federal trial. Um, we have uh, raised some double jeopardy issues in relation to the state prosecution because some of it is duplicitous with the federal case. 
uh, but there's four cases and they're not all duplicious. So uh, that, that lays at the, uh, at the feet of Kim Fox if, if she wants to go ahead and, and uh, with those cases. Will there be any double jeopardy issues if he is convicted now in the federal case on what he was exonerated in in 2008 in the state case? Or is there, no, will there, there be no appealable issue there? So there, there's a, um, there's a doctrine called the separate sovereign doctrine. Uh, defense attorneys, we all hate it. The Supreme Court looked at it a couple of years ago and left it in place. The separate sovereign doctrine says that the federal government is a different government than every state government. So it's as if uh, the federal government is, is a different country than, than from the states. You can be prosecuted in state court and prosecuted for the same thing in federal court. That's why you saw Derek Chauvin get, uh, in Minnesota, get prosecuted on the, the George Floyd thing, or they get prosecuted in state court, they get prosecuted in federal court. You've seen that with the Breonna Taylor case in Atlanta, where they get a civil rights. You know, it's a little bit different charge, and the Supreme Court has said as long as there's that little difference, uh, it's permissible. Yeah, you see it in a lot of cases now with uh, a murder charge ex examples in state cases, like you said, and then like the federal hate crime statute. So, so mm -hmm. um, Steve Greenberg, we appreciate your insight. We will have you on in the next couple of weeks, friend of the stream. Uh, R. Kelly's defense attorney in the state case now, I've been defending him since 2018. We appreciate you talking with us about the ongoing R. Kelly trial as the defense now begins their case, their presentation, their defense of R. Kelly. This in his second federal trial taking place here in Chicago. Of course, a story that we have been out in front of and will continue to be out in front of. For now, thank you for joining us on the stream. I'm Brad Edwards. Now back to the stream.